Okay, so welcome back. We are continuing with substrate integrated web kite. And for substrate integrated web kite, we have seen that we have one more additional reason of loss, and that is the leakage loss from the side walls. So, so we want to keep it minimum because we introduced SIW for a lower loss compared to other printed lines. So, here we are plotting in this graph we are uh, doing loss study, we are plotting the loss uh, in dB per lambda, lambda is the guided wavelength versus different p value p by periodicity by lambda for different diameter of this periodic via. So, for the first case d by lambda equal to 0 0.05 and for this last one d by lambda equal to 0 0.20. So, for a given periodicity d is higher. So, that means what we are decreasing the gap or we are expecting lower leakage loss through this gap. So, as you can see from this plot. So, these plots are obtained by using full wave simulator which give you very accurate uh, result almost similar to measured result. So, for a given periodicity then if I keep on decreasing d value, the h to h separation increases and leakage loss increases. So, we have higher loss. So, for a given d, if I increase periodicity, again we will be facing the same problem. Now, if I uh, define the loss by a suggested value, let us say 0 0.05 dB per lambda, then we cannot consider any value on top of this red line we have to consider only the bottom of the red line. So, it determines some design criteria. We have some limiting value of d. So, below which we cannot use otherwise there will be higher leakage loss through this gap between two metal via. Here is the plot of alpha and beta measured alpha and beta and also predicted alpha and beta by using full wave simulator. So, it is drawn for a SIW designed in a substrate of dialectic constant 9.9 .9 and tan delta 0 0.0002 and we are using copper as the metal and the dimension you can see here the D diameter is 0 0.635 millimeter periodicity is approximately 1 millimeter. The uh, separation midpoint to midpoint via separation for the side walls it is uh, approximately 4 millimeter and thickness of the substrate it is 0.254 millimeter. And you see the measured response and the predicted response by full wave simulator it is very close and its cutoff frequency is nearly 15 gigahertz. So, at cutoff frequency what we expect the total loss alpha which is due to the three reasons it will be infinity and then it decreases. And not only that do you remember for rectangular wave kite when we have both dialectic loss and conductor loss in that case loss is approximately minimum at 1.5 times of Fc. Here also we are expecting similar effect for SIW. So, alpha has minimum value approximately at 1.5 times of Fc, then it slightly increases. And the beta, so beta is equal to 0 at the cutoff frequency. So, it shows clearly the cutoff frequency is 13.5 or 13.8 gigahertz and then at higher frequency beta changes linearly. So, if I consider very close to the cutoff frequency, this line will be dispersive. If we move away from the cutoff frequency, dispersion, this dispersion effect will decrease. So, we have a closed form expression where attenuation is minimum. So, approximately it is F naught where the attenuation is minimum, it is 1.5 times of the cut off frequency. And one more interesting thing that SIW it supports 
both slow wave and fast wave. So, if I plot beta by k naught instead of beta, so then how the plot it looks? Let me plot it. So, we are going to plot beta by k naught normalized beta versus frequency in hertz. So, beta by k naught let us say it represents equal to 1.0 line. So, if by beta by k naught is less than 1 that represents V p is higher than c or first wave. So, for rectangular wave guide if I plot beta by k naught let us say this is the f c then it varies according to this dotted line. It will be always a first wave this is for a rectangular wave guide air field without any dialectic or epsilon r this is equal to 1. Now, for S i w structure we have some dialectic material always present. So, we are loading it by epsilon r and now let us say we have adjusted the width so that they are having similar cut off frequencies. Now, for S i w if I plot beta y k naught then it supports both slow wave as well as first wave. So, for this part beta y k naught is more than 1. So, it represents the slow wave region and the left hand side part for which beta y k naught is less than 1. So, it represents the first wave region. So, what we see then? S i w it supports both first wave and slow wave. So, this is not just for S i w for a air field rectangular wave guide if we load it with some dialectic material for that case also we will see that it, it supports both first wave and slow wave. Now, the design graph it is showing p by lambda c versus d by lambda c plot, p is the periodicity, d is the diameter of metallic via and lambda c this is the uh, wavelength at cut off frequency. Now, uh, this right hand side bottom part you see it this part in this region it represents d is more than p that cannot happen for physical realization d is it always should less should be less than p. So, the limiting factor is d is equal to p and we have a straight line for that. So, this design graph it shows we have solution only in the upper half of this part. Now, one more factor if we increase p for a fixed d that means, we are increasing the separation h to h separation leakage will increase. If we if, if we use some suggested value of leakage let us say the normalized leakage constant alpha l by k naught it should be less than 10 to the power minus 4 to keep this leakage smaller than this value we cannot use this left hand side part because for this part this gap between two metallic v is too big and we will face leakage. So, then the re region of interest is shown by this yellow line. Now, this we have a limiting factor again which is coming due to the band gap effect. You remember p it should be less than lambda by 4 at the upper edge of my band of operation. So, this upper region is limited by band gap region. Similarly, we defined one lower region. So, this is it represents the over perforated regions because if we drill too many vias it will become fragile. So, it is not mechanically rigid. So, to avoid that we are defining one more forbidden region and so as a result you can choose any d and p value to realize your S i w structure the solution you should take from this yellow part only. 
So, now we know enough theorems. So, let us see then what are the design uh, criteria. So, design rules are described here. First rule it comes from the band gap effect at the band edge upper cut off frequency p by lambda c it should be less than 0.25 already we discussed. And then to keep the leakage loss minimum smaller than this suggested value 10 to the power minus 4 it can be shown p should be less than equal to twice d. So, at least d should be half of p then and for mechanical rigidity p by lambda c it should be more than 0 0.05 we defined it. So, basically this design rules it describes this region of interest. Next we have to calculate the effective width. Once we have the effective width a effective then we can use the rectangular wave kite formula. So, a it represents the physical separation midpoint to midpoint separation and a effective it represents the effective separation between the two effective electric side walls. Now, let us see how this a effective it varies with uh, a it varies with the periodicity p and the p a diameter d. So, we are plotting again p by lambda c versus d by lambda c and you remember this is the region of interest. So, left hand side in some region it shows that a effective by a it is actually uh, more than 1, but we are not using this region because we know if we choose any p and d from this region then we will face high leakage loss. So, we have to choose a solution from this yellow region and this in this yellow region we see that k a effective by a it is always less than 1 as we predict from this formula. A effective it should be always less than 1. So, why the calculation of a effective is so important? Because once we have the expression or the actual value of a effective then you can use all the formula you learn for rectangular wave guide. Next is design steps. So, let us say for any given application, now you are asked to design one SIW. That means, you have to choose a substrate first and then you choose your periodicity, you choose your D and you choose the via to via sidewall separation A. So, already we have the design rules, we can use those design rules to obtain the physical parameters for fabrication. So, let us start with the first step calculation of a effective. Once we have a effective from that we can calculate the physical separation a. So, how we calculate a effective? Let us say the suggested band given lower frequency and upper frequency you already know. Then you can calculate the mid band frequency of interest that is simply upper cut up plus lower cut up divided by 2. Then we keep the minimum attenuation point at the mid band frequency. So, if your mid band frequency is F naught in that case then we can choose F c value that is equal to F naught by 1.5. Once you have F c you can calculate A effective. So, A effective equal to approximately lambda c by 2 square root of epsilon r. Now, we have a effective. So, we can use this formula to calculate what is the physical separation a. Next, we have to choose d and p. So, already we know the requirements p should be less than equal to twice d and p by lambda c we have a lower limit and upper limit it will be it should be within 1 by 5 to 1 by 20. If nothing is specified we choose a midpoint value p by lambda c equal to 1 by 10 and then already we calculated a. So, now we have all the parameters 
A, P and D. How to choose the substrate? If I increase epsilon r, the structure will compact will be compact because A effective will be smaller, but at the same time its power handling capability will decrease and loss will increase because with increasing epsilon r you are decreasing cross sectional area. Not only that, if I choose a higher thickness that means, we are increasing cross sectional area. So, we are increasing the power handling capability as well as we are decreasing loss. So, depending on the substrate available to you and requirement application requirement you have to choose your substrate wisely. What it should be the epsilon r, what should be the thickness of the substrate. Let us take one example. You are asked to design one SIW for Q band application. So, uh, my band of interest is, is K U band 12 to 18 gigahertz and the substrate already given it is uh, the available substrate is 1.58 millimeter thick RTD right 5880 substrate for which epsilon r this is equal to 2.2 and tan delta point will not 9. Now, we are going to fabricate it by using uh, mechanical drilling and the drill bit available are 0 0.5 millimeter diameter 0 0.8, 1, 2 and 3 millimeter. So, you have to choose a proper drill bit and then fabricate your structure. So, for that you have to calculate then D, P and A. We can utilize these three steps and then one by one you can calculate. So, what should be the first step? The first step is the calculation of A effective. Now, the band of operation is given 12 to 18. So, mid band where we will keep the attenuation minimum, it is coming then 15 gigahertz. So, F c is 15 by 1.5 10 gigahertz, then calculate what is A effective at 10 gigahertz. So, once you have that you can calculate uh, the D value and P value. So, here I am showing the calculated values A effective is 10.1, P we chose lambda C by 10, it is coming approximately 2 millimeter. Then the chosen values are D equal to P by 2 to keep the leakage loss minimum, we are considering the limiting uh, fact value and the drill bit then uh, we have to use 1 millimeter and the corresponding A according to this formula it is coming 10.6. So, midpoint to midpoint physical separation it should be 10.6 millimeter. So, if you fabricate the, this structure in this substrate it should support 12 to 18 gigahertz band applications. So, before going to next topic which is web kite uh, dialectic web kite, let me discuss about the fabrication procedure, how we fabricate uh, in printed circuit board technology. We can fabricate SIW structure and as well as we can fabricate micro strip or CPW structure. So, two methods usually we use one is chemical etching method and another one is milling method. So, in chemical etching method what we do? First, we use some photosensitive material on the copper cladding and then we print some mask, it can be negative as well as positive. So, here in IIT Kharagpur we design negative. So, you have some metal patterns you want to obtain it and the unwanted copper part we have to etch, so that only the required or desired metal part will be remaining. So, now for this undesired metal part we will print in black color, then we will keep this mask on that uh, photosensitive uh, pasted uh, copper clad and then we keep it under UV ray. So, 
the all the uh, open part it will be exposed by uh, the exposed part it will be uh, its chemical property will change under uv ray and then we use some sort of dye and that will change the color of this exposed part so here we are showing some example here so this is a chemical bath and when we immerse this uh, copper cladded structure inside dye you can see the micro strip part uh, which is actually desired so its color is changing and then once we keep it in a uh, etching solution like ferric chloride then the unexposed part copper from this unexposed part will etch away and only the copper in this part will remain so that's how we can realize the top metallic pattern we have one more method it's using mechanical milling we have some computer controlled machine like this uh, in iit kharagpur we are having one lpk and one mits machine so inside this machine what we have we have a uh, drilling machine like this and it can also do milling we have different types of bit for different purpose for milling we have milling bits for drilling we have drill bit and to cut away a substrate part we have also substrate cutter and what it does simply it milling it, it mill or it simply rub away the unwanted copper from the top surface so that is how we can obtain the met required metal pattern and this is fully computer controlled and the fabrication procedure is very accurate even we can uh, fabricate a thin line as thin as 50 micrometer and with a metal to metal edge separation as small as for 50 micrometer so frequency up to 110 gigahertz or even up to 140 gigahertz is possible now how to obtain the vias for SIW or for ground back CPW lines. So, what we do again we will be using those now drilling bits. So, we will be having some air vias by using this drilling bit. Now, once we fabricate air vias we will be having exposed dielectric we need some metallization on the dielectric. We cannot use electroplating technique directly on dielectric because as a starting material we need some metal for electroplating. So, we use some initiator which will deposit a thin layer of copper a few uh, nanometer on the surface of this dielectric then we put it for electroplating. So, here this figure is showing how we fabricate plated through hole or it calls PTH tank. So, once we have the drill uh, vias we have we use initiator on it and there is one more technique we can also use puttering or evaporation to deposit a thin layer of thickness a few nanometer of copper or aluminum or gold. So, once we have that thin layer of metal then we put it for electroplating inside this tank and what is the minimum thickness of copper we need that should be at least 5 times of the skin depth at the lowest frequency of operation. So, here we are showing two different types of via by using this PTH basically what we obtain a uh, via like this right side. So, you can see the hole. So, from one side of the substrate you can see the other side because inside we have air and on the cylindrical surface we have copper deposition. You can see this copper layer from top view and left hand side one more via fabrication procedure. In this case we used some metallic paste we have some silver paste or gold paste. So, inside we put them and then put it in oven keep it for a few hours then it will become solid. So, left hand side it shows solid metallic via, but its fabrication procedure is expensive and time consuming. So, next topic we are going to start web guiding structure using dielectric only. Already for the surface waves we have seen that 
a dielectric slab itself can support electromagnetic wave propagation. And dielectric slab backed by ground plane that can also support electromagnetic wave propagation. But if I use a dielectric slab, the wave is not confined to any channel, it will spread throughout the surface. So, that is why we call it surface wave. Now, the wave guide, if I want to design any guiding structure in dielectric technology, so we need to design a channel first. We can simply take a thin layer of dielectric material instead of slab, we have to consider a cross a rectangular cross section and then it can support wave propagation. What is the advantage? So, for this case, we can minimize conductor loss. So, that was the main problem for printed lines. So, instead of then printed lines, we can use this different types of dielectric guides with reduced loss. So, here are some examples. The first one is called the image guide. You can see one dielectric channel, it is sitting on a metal plane, which is used as the ground. In the second example, we have actually two different layers of dielectric. The first layer of dielectric material, dielectric constant epsilon r 1, over it we have that channel of dialectic constant epsilon r 2. And in the third example, we have trapped image kite. So, in this case only change with the first one is that we have packaging. So, we can minimize the cross talk between two different uh, channels. So, for all these dialectic guides, we always face with dialectic dialectic boundary. For the first example, we have air dialectic boundary. In second example, we have air dialectic boundary in addition to that dialectic dialectic boundary separated by this interface. right? So, what is the problem we face? It supports hybrid mode. So, that means, in the direction of wave propagation, we have both electric field component and magnetic field component. And not only that, we have to deal with all the six components, three components for the electric field and three components for the magnetic field. But fortunately, for different wave guiding structures, mainly we have three dominant components. In some cases, we will see two dominant component of magnetic field and one dominant component of electric fields and in other cases two dominant component of electric fields and one dominant component of magnetic field. So, we, we use some approximation to simplify the analysis and we deal with only these dominant components of magnetic or electric fields. So, we will take a break then we will start again. Thank you.